Welcome to our World Day of Prayer on this Friday night. Traditionally, it's done here in Mary Immaculate Church or down in Reverend Craig's Church, the Church of Ireland, and we alternate it between the two of us each year, but things are different, so everything has been done remotely. So we begin here at Mary Immaculate Church, and I welcome you all, and I thank all of you who are taking part in this World Day of Prayer, the ladies from the church here and the ladies from the Church of Ireland Church. It's wonderful that we can gather to pray. At least we can be together in that way. And so we begin by asking God's blessing. Before we celebrate this year's World Day of Prayer, we remember all those around the world who have lost loved ones to COVID-19 and to give thanks for those who have recovered. We especially remember and give thanks to the doctors and nurses for their great dedication. We remember all essential workers and volunteers who give so much of their time to helping others. We take a moment to remember them in silence. And we give thanks for them in our hearts. And I hand you over to Craig and Vida, who will lead you in the rest of this evening's prayer. And again, thank you for joining with us. If you're a quiz watcher, you might join, join into Pointless of an Afternoon just before tea time. And any question that's asked about a country, one of the great go-to pointless answers is often Vanuatu. Well, the Christian women of the Republic of Vanuatu have prepared this year's 2021 World Day of Prayer service. They welcome you to join them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And just to educate us all about Vanuatu, where it is, life in Vanuatu, the church in Vanuatu, we're going to join and watch now in a short little video. And then after that, we're going to join together in our opening song, which is the song all over the world, because there's that great sense, isn't there, today, that we are joining with many brothers and sisters in Christ in this World Day of Prayer service. And all the words that you need for the hymn will appear on the screen. So wherever you are, whether you're sitting on the couch or in the kitchen or wherever it is, do join in and sing along knowing that we are all joining in something bigger and greater than ourselves. Vanuatu, meaning country that stands up, is a Y-shaped collection of over 80 islands in the South Pacific Ocean. Australia lies to the west. Inhabitants are known as Ni Vanuatu. Most of these 310,000 residents are rural. Many are of Melanesian descent with a Polynesian minority. Port Vila is the largest city with 45,000 residents. Vanuatu people use just under 100 dialects. Children usually start with their village language or Bislama. English and French are used for school instruction. Vanuatu's flag is green, yellow, black, and red. These colors stand for vegetation, gospel light, the people, and the blood of boars and men. The emblem consists of boar tusks and crossed namale leaves symbolizing peace. Vanuatu has a tropical humid climate moderated by trade winds between May and October. Temperatures in the northern islands average 27 degrees Celsius with an annual rainfall of about 3,000 millimeters. Common natural disasters include earthquakes, cyclones, and volcanic eruptions. Rising sea levels threaten to erode the land. The World Day of Prayer artwork, created by Vanuatuan artist Juliette Pita, illustrates the weather and the resiliency of the people. The painting shows a mother bending and praying over her child during Cyclone Pam in 2015. The waves crash over her but a palm tree with strong roots bends protectively. Three quarters of these mountainous islands, outlined with narrow coastal plains, are covered by natural vegetation. Primary lower forests include tropical lowland evergreens and small areas of broad-leaved deciduous. The giant banyan tree on Tana Island is one of the largest trees in the world. Less than 2% of the land is arable and is used primarily for cattle grazing and cash crops rather than vegetable gardens. This has contributed to malnutrition. Hibiscus, the unofficial flower of Vanuatu, is plentiful. Bats are the only native mammals. 
An interesting Vanuatu bird is the megapode, which lays its eggs in hot volcanic soil. Its young, which emerge fully feathered, can run immediately and fly within 24 hours. Sanctuaries have been created for turtles to restore their dwindling population. Colorful schools of small fish are a feature in many coral gardens and reefs. Nearby large fish include bonito, yellowfin tuna, and sailfish. Staple foods include yam, taro, banana, coconut, sugarcane, tropical nuts, greens, pork, fowl, and seafood. The national ceremonial dish is lap lap. It is a pudding made of grated root crops or plantain mixed with coconut milk and sometimes greens and meat and wrapped in leaves. Before the arrival of Christian missionaries in the 19th century, each island had its own god. They believed there was a creator somewhere in the heavens and sacrifices were offered to that being. Christianity is now the major religion at 83%. World Day of Prayer was introduced to Vanuatu by two female Canadian missionaries in 1946. Current focuses are employment and educational opportunities for young rural women, maternal and children's health, and cancer. In 2021, we pray with all Vanuatu women. The conch shell which we have just heard is a traditional gathering sound calling us to worship. Let us listen to the words of worship as in the first verses of Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labour in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. 
me say together with the words that will appear. Happy is everyone who puts their trust in God, our firm foundation. Amen. One of the lovely things about joining in a service that's been put together by Christians from different parts of the world is hearing some of the ways in which they worship God. And the next song that we are invited to join in one is a traditional one from Vanuatu, of course, listening to the voices of Vanuatu and its words are lovely. It is time to get together as a nation and a family. Let's forget our differences and let's work in unity. So let's hear these words and join in them as we become more familiar with them. Let us be thankful for the great blessings God has given us. We thank you, Lord our God, for you are good and your love endures forever. We give thanks that you are able to bring hope even through the toughest of times and that you are always with us and will never leave us. We thank you, Lord, for the fellowship we have with each other and with sisters and brothers gathered round the world for this year's World Day of Prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the fertile lands, for the fresh air, clean environment, beautiful sunshine, blue seas and still waters of Vanu Vanuatu Islands. We thank you, Lord, for the sweet singing of birds, the sound of animals and the unique life that abounds in the seas and rivers. Thank you also for rain and waterfalls, all of which powerfully declare to us your greatness. We thank you, Lord, for the sound of children singing, laughing and shouting, and for the prayers of young and old, all of which manifest the joy of your love. We are thankful for the great things God has done for us. Let us come before our faithful God to confess our need for forgiveness. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We stand before you to confess the times we have not listened to your voice. We have done things we ought not to have done, and we have not done things which we ought to have done. We confess that we have listened to your words, but have not acted on them. Please forgive us. Help us to be attentive to your voice. We face challenges in our world today, we try to build our lives on the firm foundation of the words of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we have built our lives on sand. Bring us back to do what is right and just. Please forgive us. 
help us to be attentive to your word. Creator God, we confess that we have polluted the environment and harmed the sea creatures by discarding our waste into their habitats. We have endangered marine life and ruined sustainable livelihoods. We know we can help to change this. We regret our failings and we commit ourselves to fulfil the mandate to be good stewards of your creation. Please forgive us. Help us to be attentive to your voice. We confess that in Ireland we take our right to education and employment and financial support as granted. Help us remember this is not always the case and be mindful and supportive of those less fortunate than us. We may live in a country with financial supports, but this doesn't mean we treat everyone equally. Please forgive us. God, hear our prayers. God is looking for a house to live in. He says, what is the house that you would build for me? Isaiah 66 verse 1. God our Father, we come before you and pray that you will grant us your spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Teach us to discern the truth. Lead and guide us to live in a way that is pleasing and acceptable to you. By the power of your word, we commit ourselves to be transformed in our lives and our nations. Make us a house of justice and peace. Gracious God, accept our commitment. We're going to join together in a more familiar song of praise. And if we were all together, we could have done this as a musical round. But uh, as we're not together, we'll just uh, do it in a more straightforward way. And it's a lovely hymn and song that recognises the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit and our love and dedication to each. Father, we adore you. Jesus, we adore you. Spirit, we adore you. So again, join in the words from wherever you are as we sing this together. Rita, I speak on behalf of Rita. Rita was born the second child of a family of eight. And when she left primary school, there was no money for her father education. Her father could only afford to educate her older brother. Rita really wanted to enhance her education and was disheartened that neither she nor her father had money to pay for her sewing classes. As Rita had no opportunities to attend the formal secondary school system, she turned her attention to the church. She joined a youth group, attended Bible studies, and later became involved with women's ministry to fulfill her desire to be educated. Rita was very determined and her faith in God was so strong that she found ways to educate herself and acquire new skills to earn a living. By putting her new skills into practice, Rita sells items at the mama's markets where other women like herself with little education can earn a living. She gives thanks to God for being the source of her strength and wisdom and for helping her put into practice what she has learned. Now she can help to support herself, her husband and their three children. 
Rectal's story is one of strength and determination, founded on her faith in God. In Vanuatu, education for all is not mandatory, and equal access of boys and girls to school is still a work in progress. Many children in rural areas walk long distance to attend school where the teaching is either in English or French. I speak on behalf of Mothi. Mothi and her little brother grew up with her mother in a single parent family. When their mother remarried, they were left with their grandparents. Later, their father remarried and took both of them to live with him and his new wife. When their stepmother gave birth to her own children, her attitude towards them changed altogether. With more children to feed and no room in the house for her, Mothi had to find her own food on the streets. She had to sleep in a shack and used an old copper sack as a blanket to protect her from the cold. Eventually, Mothi met some Christians who told her that God loved her. Mothi could not understand this kind of love in the midst of her suffering. Gradually, she came to trust that God would take care of her, even though her family had abandoned her. This trust in God grew inside her and became the foundation of her life. She became strong in her Christian faith and she was able to share her trust in God with others. Mothi's story is one of neglect and abandonment. The ministry of Christians brought her to a place of safety and gave her a firm foundation. Banatou's estimated population growth is one of the highest in the Pacific region. Malnutrition is a concern in both urban and rural areas. Although the tradition of growing organic food in gardens is strong, sadly the food industries of powdered milk and junk foods are causing the replacement of natural food for babies and children. I speak on behalf of Jack Linda. Jack Linda comes from a rural village. Since she was a young girl, her dream was to obtain a job in tourism and hospitality. She travelled to Port Phillip, where she discovered that for any job, she needed training. Jack Linda had no family in Port Phillip, so she ended up living on the outskirts of the city. She had no money for anything, not even the fare to return to her village. She knew that this was not God's plan for her, but she ended up feeling herself trapped there. Her prayer now is that young people may be able to find opportunities for work in their own rural communities. She prays that God will provide these opportunities for young people in their villages so that they may prosper and contribute to the well-being of Vanuata. Jacqueline's story is a familiar one of following a dream that can lead to disillusionment and danger. With 75% of the population living in rural areas with little employment opportunities, young people have to migrate to urban areas to find employment. They arrive with minimal education and no trained skills to enable them to gain employment in the city. There is a need for policies and programs that will provide job opportunities in rural areas. It is important that young people can stay and work in their own communities and find the fulfillment of their dreams there. Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 to 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. This is the word of the Lord.
And so I share these words in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you've ever had the opportunity to walk up Mermaid Hill and to the beautiful little amphitheatre, almost natural amphitheatre and mass rock, you are rewarded with wonderful views across Virginia. We've gathered there over many years on St. Patrick's Day and there have been many rewards early in the morning, whether it's been a, a foggy morning and the cloud as the sun comes up, just appears, disappears and Virginia appears. It's a beautiful spot. Perhaps you have your own kind of mountainside where you like to go up and to see and to view all around us. Well, if you can picture that sort of scene in your mind, that brings us into our reading, which was beautifully read a few moments ago from Matthew chapter 7. It actually forms part of three chapters in Matthew's Gospel that is known as the Sermon on the Mount. Now, if you think that Father Dermot or I maybe speak a little bit long on a Sunday morning in our homily or our sermon, well, you can imagine that uh, Jesus, well, he does it in a far better way than either of us probably would. But he has this great big long sermon and almost at his feet are gathered multitudes on this mountainside. Hence, it being called the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus, over the three chapters, really is teaching and setting before people, those who would claim or would think about following him, what it is to live out the Christian faith or what it is to be a follower of Jesus that it's not something that we just keep in our heads or it's not something that we just say with our lips but it's something that is to be lived out in the everyday ordinary and varied situations of life and our Bible text comes at the end of the Sermon on the Mount Jesus was concerned about the huge crowd that had followed him to that place who were keen to hear his words now, in two senses, I guess he was addressing them. And it almost brings us back to the feeding of the 5,000. I'm sure they were hungry and thirsty. And of course, we know in the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus physically feeds them. But the kind of feeding that he is talking about in this passage is more about a spiritual hunger and thirsting. They were keen to learn more about the kingdom of of God and that's an important thing to grasp not only then as they were hanging in every word as Jesus spoke literally from the mouth of God but it's a challenge to all of us that we would hunger and thirst for more of God for God's word for devotion in all of our faith and Jesus was teaching the people not just to hear his words as I've said but to act on them and we see that in verse 24 it's not an empty instruction. Behind it is the full understanding of God, of the ministry of Jesus, which was established at this point, and the kingdom of God, the role of Jesus. One of his roles is to come and to direct people back to the ways of God, to purify something that has drifted from what God would want it to be. And he's encouraging the people then, encouraging the people now to live wisely by building on the firm foundation that is the word of God. Which is why we proclaim at the end of our readings, this is the word of the Lord. This is the gospel of Christ to which we respond, praise be to God, thanks be to God. And all the teachings in Matthews chapter 5 to 7 are deliberated on two things. Hear and act or listen and do. The results that will come depend on the choices made and the actions taken. There's a logic in that, isn't there? Jesus' closing words for his teaching was a story of comparison. The wise builder was safe while the foolish one lost his house. The wise builder acted on the words of Jesus while the foolish one did not. So let us consider this carefully prior to making our own decisions in life. We all hear, we all act, we all listen and we do. Our thoughts influence our actions. And where our thoughts more importantly come from, are based from, are drawn from, influence our actions. 
So I'm going to invite us to reflect on the following questions, just for a few moments, to think about them even beyond this service, and to engage before God, and to be honest before him. So the first question is this, on what do we build our lives? Do we become easily overwhelmed when things go wrong, leaving our thoughts in a negative spin? Sometimes financial worries can destroy our joy. Certainly the worries and the challenges and the loneliness and the stress and the fear of these last 12 months have done that, haven't they? We've been locked down, it seems, for so long. We are missing our family and our loved ones. We have lost loved ones and not been able to grieve them properly. We have not seen loved ones in nursing homes or hospitals. We've not been able to be with friends or neighbours in the way that we would want. We have the worries and stresses of life. Does it destroy our joy? And where do we sustain that joy from? That's the first question. Are broken relationships about health stealing our peace? Do we worry about what other people think? Or are we busy comparing ourselves to others? And in this day and age, it's such a, an easy thing to do, isn't it? This can be a trap. It can spiral our thoughts and actions quickly down, undermining our self-worth, our self-value. We forget that we are made in God's image and precious to him. That's where our worth comes from. And we know, of course, that our worth is so much to God, don't we? That he sent his son Jesus into the world to die on the cross for us so that we would know how valuable and how loved we are to him. Jesus teaches us many lessons in these verses leading up to this parable. In the parable, the storms of life came and the house built on the sand fell. But the house that was built on the rock stood firm. And we know a parable, of course, is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. The builders are us. Where do we build our lives? Do we build our lives on things that are temporal and can fall, as we've seen over this year, in a moment? Or when all is stripped away, are our lives built on the solid rock of Jesus? Life can be difficult. If you've lived life for any length of time, you know that, don't you? Trials come at us from nowhere, destroying our contentment and security. But if our security is in Christ, then the storm cannot destroy us. Building a solid foundation in God begins with believing the words of Christ and the invitation to come to him, to hand our lives into him. And to confess him as Lord and Saviour of all of our lives. And by building our lives on scripture, by building our lives in and around the person of Jesus Christ, we become solid in our faith and our actions will follow. The fruits of following him will follow. Galatians, love, joy, peace and so on. In how we engage with people, in how we see people. And how we love people all will change because of that strong and firm foundation in Christ. When our lives are built on a secure loving relationship with our Heavenly Father, God becomes the foundation and we can withstand any difficulty life may bring to us. That's not about trivialising what we go through in life because there are no easy or trivial answers to that. But when the storms of life come, even in the joys of life, we know that we can withstand anything when God is by our side. When we choose to build our lives in something other than God, well, the truth, sadly, that many have found out is that those storms can destroy. So we just take a moment to reflect and then Vida is going to finish this time of reflection with a simple gathering
Dear friends, we are challenged today to build our thoughts on the sure foundation of God's word. Let us build our homes, our nations and the world on the words of Jesus. This is our solid foundation. Amen. Amen. And join together in our next hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd, I'll Not Want. Gracious God, we thank you for all the blessings we have received from you. We thank you for families and friends. We praise you for leading us to be creative and able to support our families. We dedicate our offerings to the World Day of Prayer, who will share these gifts with the communities in need here and around the world. Amen. And if you'd like to make an offering or donation, you're welcome to do that via either myself or to drop into the, the parish office uh, beside the chapel and uh, those gifts will be passed on to the appropriate places. And so we're going to come to a time of prayer. We're going to pray for Vanuatu and for the world, for our land, for our communities and for each other. Now at the end of each little section of prayer I will lead one and then Vida will respond and the words on the screen you join with her in the response and then Vida will lead a prayer and I will then respond and again you join 
with the words on the screen in the response. So let us be united in prayer with Vanuatu and the world. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that there are many countries like Vanuatu whose peoples live in harmony and peace despite their ethnic, cultural and religious differences. And we pray that for our own land too, that in our cultural, ethnic and religious differences we would live in peace north, south, west and east of this beautiful country. We pray for peace, compassion and reconciliation amongst all peoples and nations especially in the war-torn areas of our world. We pray for the unity of leaders to stand against injustice, abuse, inequality or discrimination anywhere in the world. Lord, help us to appreciate and accept each other's differences and to live in harmony with one another. And Lord, we remember those who live in places like Vanuatu, prone to natural disasters of flood, hurricanes, cyclones and volcanoes. We are all well aware how climate change and the misuse of the world's natural resources are affecting our beautiful planet. And so we pray that we will act and listen on the advice of experienced conservationists. Lord, help us to build a better future for our children's children. Father God, we give thanks for all those who have given and are giving themselves so generously to save the lives of others. We pray that you will give comfort to those who are sick, those who are bereaved, and those who have suffered all kinds of difficulties. Amen. Heavenly Father, may your love be known and celebrated throughout the world. May your will for happiness and peace be realised in the hearts of all. Give us the strength to live our daily calling, to face darkness, uncertainty and pain with courage and love. Forgive us the wrong we do and the hurt we cause others and help us to forgive those who have hurt us. Help us also to realise that there are many paths to your truth and love and that others know and understand you differently. Keep us from despair and all unnecessary anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of that day when your light will shine more fully in our hearts. For yours is the earth with all its fullness, the world and all its peoples and the pledge of a new world to come. Amen. And so as our time comes to a close on this World Day of Prayer, we're going to pray God's blessing on us and we are going to remember that we are all sent wherever we are to represent Christ in the lives around us. God our Father, we thank you for your loving presence within each one of us through the Holy Spirit. We pray that you will guide and restore us so that we may bring your will into our homes, our communities and our nations. And as we go out from this service, let us remember the words of Jesus. Let us be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us, upon those that we love and upon those who we pray for each day. And may God's blessing remain with us now and always. Amen. Let us make this final commitment together. We will go from here with these blessings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ and build your house on his firm foundation. Yes, we will follow Jesus, who is our strong foundation. He is the one who is the way, the truth and the life. Amen. Amen. Well, we've sung different types of hymns. We've some, sung some hymns from Vanuatu. But each year, one of the traditional hymns that carries forward is this closing hymn. And it's a lovely hymn that reminds us that at the end of the day, 
that God is always with us. And at the beginning of a new day, God is always with us. So we sing this closing hymn. The day thou gavest, Lord, is end. The darkness falls at thy behest. To thee our morning hymns ascend. Thy praise shall sanctify our rest. Thank you.